too profound, we freeze the drummers here I'll be to the message clear Go Paul Dance and Paul, they say the way So writer, leave the way Time to madness, it's play Gotta wake up, see the light So I had found myself just walking through a mall. Um, you really don't see malls anymore these days, but it kind of reminded me of this one as a kid. There were kind of amusement. It was like an indoor amusement park plus mall. The the center had like an indoor roller coaster, some gaming cabinets, just various things like that. Something you usually don't see in a mall, except it was really rare indoor amusement park ones i don't think i've ever been to this um at least in this fake life i mean i did in my dream uh and there was just people everywhere adults kids just doing what you would do in a mall like that and i remember i was there meeting someone and i couldn't quite remember who it was so i just kind of walked around the promenade there in the center just kind of watching everybody go about their business, playing games and stuff like that. And then the word game stuck in my head. And I couldn't really think what that meant at the time. But as I continue to ponder and I'm strolling through, just kind of brushing through my way through the crowd, and occasionally my shoulder would bump up against someone, people just standing out in the walkway. Could hear the squeaking of shoes on the tile floors, the rustling of clothes as people hurried and scurried about their business, having fun, laughter echoing in the air. And through the crowd ahead of me was as if it suddenly got denser with people. And I had noticed this old man, yeah, not quite the same old man that has been in previous notable dreams of mine but kind of but he had this really big smile on his face and at first thought that he was old the first glance kind of looked like old enough to where his cheeks are kind of droopy he has a lot more loose skin on the face uh larger ears that are just kind of hanging down from all the years of aging and gravity doing its thing and he makes eye contact and just smiles real big almost as if he didn't even have any teeth in his mouth anymore or he had his dentures out so it was like a really loose wide smile i couldn't help but chuckle though his eyes were still locked on and just they're big and cheerful and next thing i know i rushed through the crowd i wasn't really i wasn't even walking it's just kind of like i was pulled through the crowd and like as if you were the fast forward vhs and watch them zoom across the screen it was kind of like that and next thing i know i was in front of them and he didn't at this point he doesn't look like an old man uh he kind of looked like uh, he was he was a white male kind of like blonde hair Maybe it was like dirty blonde or something. It wasn't like pure white, but it wasn't brown. It was like somewhere in between. And it was slicked back, all nice and neat, had some thick volume to it, and chiseled chin and like almost a perfect nose. And he's still locking eyes on me and smiling. And he points off to his right. And I look over, I'm not seeing anything through the crowd, and he says, Gamer, Eric, within. And it clicked. I was, like, I was thinking of Gamer hey, that's earlier. Me. Hey, that's me. Yeah, actually, it, it was you. Um, then all of a sudden, when that clicked, Eric appeared just past the crowd and he was standing over there staring over at me and he starts waving very enthusiastically his hand above the crowd waving around real high just excited and i just was overwhelmed with happiness guys eric so i I trot up to him 
And the fellow that pointed him out, I look back over my shoulder, and he's gone. But I had the sense that I was being watched. But I couldn't quite put my finger on it. So just turned back around to Eric and went up to him and started chatting. We're just kind of catching up. I'm asking him, how is G Fuel things going on? The free money he is getting. And I mean, even in the dream, I knew it wasn't going as well as he was saying it was, but that's okay. He's trying. Whether or not it's good or not for you. But we're catching up. He's telling me about the Fortnite games. He's doing some mad, sick moves on something about like a skateboard or a hoverboard or something like that. I I haven't been playing that game quite some time, so I don't know what all they've added to it. And after catching up, Eric points up, and there's a second level above us and the balcony there, and that same younger healthy man white white male with the kind of dirty blonde hair was just staring down at us smiling he's just nodding kind of i have this deep sense of approval is about the only way i could put it and suddenly i just felt like Eric and I just had a, another conversation that I wasn't even aware of occurred, but obviously it did because I knew the facts from it. And we were supposed to take the escalator upstairs and go meet the man on the, on the balcony. <clears throat> so we work our way through the crowd and up to the escalator and, to get up to the top. The kind of going up the escalator was a bit of a blur. I guess that really wasn't an important part. But to me, it kind of feels like the escalator itself is part of the journey, and that's very important. But for some reason, that just kind of glossed over in the dream. But we made it to the top with no issue. And we started to make her way down across the balcony to this man. And he's still watching us, still smiling. And he looks brighter than what he did before. Almost as if he has a glowing aura around him. When we get close to him, probably eight, ten feet away, and he lifts both of his hands up, going off to his right side, his right arm fully extended, palm up, fingers spread, and then his left arm going across his chest, palm up, fingers spread, as if he's directing us to go this way. And I grab onto Eric's hand and guide him in to the right where the man directed us to. He's following in behind us, and then he gestures again to this kind of like side hallway you would see in malls. They were usually a little strange. Usually they'd go back to the back room area or maybe like employee lounge or um, something like that. So we turned down this hallway and at first it started to get darker. The man's still falling behind us. And then he says, just up a little bit more. And suddenly, the lights turn up real bright. Not quite blindingly bright, but bright. And the deeper we get down this hallway, the rustling of clothes, the chatter, the laughs, and the squeaking of shoes on the tile floor are beginning to trail off. I'm not sure how long we've been walking down this corridor. I never looked back, but I had the sense that we were getting quite far in the actual center area of the mall. The man behind us just projected the word go in a very soft, but yet rumbling, loud fashion. It, it's weird. It was as if it was said 
with a very soft tone, but it was loud and commanding at the same time. It and just willed us to stop, turn to our right, and there was a door. We look back at the man. He's smiling and nodding his head. He says, It's fine. No one ever comes back here anyways. I can come join if you want. I wasn't entirely sure what he meant by that. It was a little odd. Um, but I said, sure, if you want. And he just nods. And kind of gave off the demeanor that he would. But he needs to run and do something real quick. And he just kind of fades away. He didn't walk away. He didn't go up or down, left or right, in or out, upside down or down. He just kind of phased out. And we just kind of shrugged. Okay. I looked at Eric, squeezed his hand a little tighter, and just chuckled and shook my head. And here I was thinking, you were the donut, Eric. <laughs> I got a little chuckle. What? Eric kind of liked what? it. <laughs> it's okay, Eric. So then we go ahead and press our way past the door into the room. And it's a bathroom. So at this point, I'm kind of wondering, it's like, well, did one of us need to go? Why did we get escorted to the bathroom? And then I started thinking, wait, why did he say he wanted to join? And I'm I'm just kind of chuckling at this point. I, I just find the whole situation entertaining. <clears throat> but yet, Eric starts walking out ahead of us. And I'm still holding onto his hand. And now he's leading. We go over to the mirrors in front of the sinks. Uh, the sinks with the mirrors on the wall. I'm not sure if it was one mirror. One giant large mirror or multiple individuals in front of the sinks. We're across from the, uh, what are those called? The uh, the stalls that you would see in bathrooms. Except they were all like handicap sized. Like jumbo sized. They seemed all to be occupied except one. Which is more towards the back. It was the stall right before the last one to the right of the entire bathroom all the way into the far back right. So Eric guides me over to it and pushes the door open and we enter. The door closes on its own. We hear this glitchunk and a little red tag popped up on the inside that stated occupied, just like all the others. Things kind of sp- smelled not quite like a restroom in there. It's getting a faint kind of I'm not quite sure how to put it. It kind of smells like this tree that occasionally I see that when it blooms with the white flowers, they kind of get banned. They're a little bit on the odd side. They stink. But despite that, there isn't like a, the usual things you would see in a stall. There were a plethora of handicap handles, not just one horizontal, but horizontals everywhere, some below, some above. And there were vertically placed ones in the same way, kind of like a, a mixed match in a web of handlebars over all the walls. And I'm not entirely sure what's going on. And Eric looks at me and smiles and says, this has been one of my things I've been wanting to do. I think they call it kind of a kink. And I'm not quite sure what he's talking about. And then it just kind of dawns on me. I'm like, are you talking about having sex in a public restroom? He just kind of nods. And I kind of, I giggle a little bit, and we hear a knock outside our stall door. And then peering over as if this person gained 
two, three feet in height than a normal person? Was this that young white guy with the kind of light, very slightly dirty blonde hair pressed back? And he's just staring down at us with this big smile on his face, just nodding, not saying anything, not blinking. And almost kind of in a commanding sensation, he says, do it. And without even thinking, Eric and I are pressing up against each other, my hands running down his chest and off along his left side. And I reach his belt line and just snake a finger down, kind of rubbing his hip, then place my hand on the other side and run it up his shirt, pull it off. And I look Eric in the eyes and go, is this what you wanted? Normally, in the waking world, I'd be a little weirded out by this. But I've come to accept that even if something seems weird in the dream, there's a reason behind it. And for some reason, I consciously knew this in the dream, which I've never really had that happen. So I just kind of went with the flow. We take some time slowly stripping each other down. All the while, that man still staring over the top of the stall at us. Just approvingly going, this is what's meant to happen. It must happen. And I'm not sure exactly what that meant. I mean, what what did he want to happen? Did, Did he want Eric's kink to be fulfilled? Or did he want this to happen because maybe he has a kink of watching people do stuff in a public stall? I don't know. At this point, I just accepted whatever's happening is happening. And I'm just kind of leaned over the toilet. I'm not exactly sure what was going on, but I know Eric was laid over my back, whispering in my ear. And it's kind of grinding away. I'm pretty sure his penis was inside me. I'm kind of liking it. I'm digging it and he whispers in my ear who's your daddy donut and uh, ever since eric's been called a donut he's not stopped going on about it he's fully embraced it and it's like drilled into my head now funny or not it's there and this it it seems to be carrying into dreams and I kind of liked it because Eric is, he tends to be a very, very submissive person. Like, he'll roll over for you, generally. But to see a dominant side from Eric was, um, I kind of felt like I just won a game of Fortnite. But (sighs) despite my excitement and the thrill of the act of Eric taking me and thrusting in. The guy that was looking over reaches in and Eric reaches back and just kind of out of nowhere the white man just kind of spawns a drink. And Eric reaches up, takes it, pops it open as and I heard a hiss as if it was carbonated, and I wasn't looking back, but I'm only assuming that it was G Fuel. This is Eric we're talking about here. I know I shouldn't be trying to put logic on any of this. It's usually the wrong route. But it, it was a fizzy drink of some sort. And he just starts going, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drops his can. Pulls out. I don't even think he finished. The guy out there opens the door. Eric walks out. They close it and walk out of the bathroom together. At this point, I'm left dumbfounded. What just happened? Was this a plan? Who was that guy? And then I woke up.
truth profound, we feast the drummers here. Fuck me to the message clear. Go Paul Dallas and Paul, they say you ain't so right. Uh, he's the way, it's on the madness. That's why you gotta wake up, see the light. Change the mental hold the truth and fold the stones are guide a cosmic drive Break the chains the mental hold the truth and fold the story told We be strong a united front Against the darkness we will hunt sides to break the simulation spell with new you power We are skibbity new you Break it free from the matrix Forces lurking reptilian scheme Tap lies that control a twisted dream Together we rise above Shattering the lies, spreading risky I knew you're staring